Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a spring of a hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken, and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, the Church celebrates the liturgical memorial of Mary, Mother of the Church. We are about to close the month of May, Mary's month, and the Church wants to remind us of this special maternity. The Virgin is not only Mother of each one of us, but she is also the Mother of all Jesus' followers group, of the baptized group, of the group of all of those who make up the Church. Mother of the Church. What is a mother's mission? A mother's mission is to give birth to the child. Then, it is to take care of the child, educate the child, defend the child, and join the child in those things that are especially painful for the child. Mary gave birth. She gave birth to the Church when she gave birth to Jesus, who is head of the Church. Mary took care of the church every time she cared for Jesus since his birth, at least until the beginning of his public life. She continued to care for the church afterwards, not only in the person of John, John the Evangelist, St. John, who at the same time took care of her, but of others who were undoubtedly were by her side, and who knows, mediating between the disputes that soon arose in the first Christian community. We know that the Virgin was with the Apostles on the day of Pentecost. We know that the Virgin was with the Apostles on the day of Pentecost, Mary the Educator. I would like to focus on this, Mary the Educator. She did not write theology treaties. There are no letters of Mary that have been preserved, and I don't know if she ever wrote them, possibly not. Yet, she was an educator, because she was Jesus' educator. For example, at conception, she sets an essential moral theological principle in our faith and in our ethics. The end does not justify the means, when she asks the angel, How can this be done, for I don't know a man? She is not asking about the end, but about the means. The most excellent end, the incarnation of the Son of God, does not justify the means. How can this be, for I don't know a man? Just until the angel confirms that she is not going to lose her virginity, that she is not going to lose her honesty, then she says, Here is the slave of the Lord. She continued educating her child. She educated her child when she was carrying her in the womb and went to visit St. Elizabeth, who was in a somewhat delicate situation because she was already old and had become pregnant for the future St. John the Baptist. She educated Jesus over and over again when she cared for the people who came with problems. Her child, 
the Son of God, the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, saw how his mother behaved, Mary the Educator, who also educates and teaches us. We should not be afraid of the Virgin, as if what she tells us is contrary to what Jesus tells us. When the Virgin has appeared, that is to say, when she has to continue being an educator in so many apparitions recognized by the Church. There, she has wanted to give us useful teachings for our life here on earth. For example, the teachings she gave at Fatima, or the teachings she gave at Lourdes, or at Last Let, are teachings of Mary the Educator, who, like a mother of the Church, she appears to remind her children, we, some things, that perhaps we are forgetting, like the existence of hell or purgatory. Then, there is another aspect of Mary, mother of the church. A mother defends her son. She defends him from those who want to attack him. Mary did it. Mary, together with St. Joseph, defended Jesus by taking him to Egypt. Mary defends Jesus. Naturally, Jesus defends Mary, but I want to focus on the aspect that Mary defends Jesus. Today, Jesus is being attacked. As always, he is being attacked by the devil, through people who are, perhaps, I want to think, they are not aware that they are instruments of the devil, and they are outside of the church. However, he is also being attacked from within the church by those who change Christ's teaching, by those who say that the Lord is outdated, that the church must be modernized and adapted to the world, that is attacking Jesus. Mary gathers her children. Mary gathers those who peacefully want to defend Christ. The defense of Christ is especially important today. It is still important to take care of Jesus present in those who suffer. It is still important to listen to the teachings of Our Lady in so many of her apparitions. But today it is especially urgent, necessary, and important to defend Jesus. Defend him as Mary did, without insults without violence, not even verbally, without hatred, without resentment, offering our sufferings for the situation of the Church, uniting ourselves with Christ's suffering for that same situation. Because if we suffer for the way things are, how much will the Lord who has given His life for the Church be suffering? So let us imitate Mary. Let us welcome her message, and let us ask her to help us be like her in loving Jesus, taking care of Jesus, transmitting Jesus' teachings, and defending Jesus. That Mary, Mother of the Church, may count on us, living members of the Church, to love Jesus, to love her, and to love the Church. So be it.